for my Baldwin brethren. Um, they're trying to make a, a new style for you, especially if you got a beard. So I guess because it was the dynamic of him going against um, the most, arguably the most influential basketball player ever. And, and Steph and that Warriors team, so. I was like, she not gonna take my coconut oil <laughs> regimen seriously. Okay. Everything else look moisturized. This is the time when my boy shoveled out his ex when it snowed and her side dude was in the house drinking hot chocolate. Yeah. Didn't even offer my man nothing to drink. What up, people? We live. Welcome to Cutting Up With E. E Man the Barber, Goat the Maker, Savannah Extraordinaire, your barber's favorite barber, podcast host, but what I was gonna say, a um, uh, uh, foodie exploration expert, uh, model, musician, actor. You see it, and so many other things, but um, that's neither here nor there right now. Um, solo dolo. Couldn't get none of my co-hosts to come in with me today. But um, we're gonna rock out and make it do what it do because uh boys got some stories and some new trends and it's NBA playoffs. Two of my favorite players still in it, of course, Steph and LeBron. Uh Goat and the runner up goat of this generation. Uh, well, Steph's a whole, a, a nuanced player, uh, a whole, what do you call it? Um, influencing a generation or changing impactful player to the game that's changed it forever. So, um, yeah, Steph's that guy. So, um, let's jump into it, people. I've seen some interesting trends as a barber in the, in the industry, and some of y'all probably seen his haircut. I'm thinking of some names for it right now. Just comment in the section below. Help me out. So the haircut, well, as you can see from the picture, for, for my bald and brethren, um, they're trying to make a, a new style for you, especially if you got a beard. So. What it is, it's a basically a reverse fade. Uh, you want to call it the full moon in the back, uh, a faded non-rat tail, because you got the circular motion. Uh, I mean, the circular fade and, and, and the rat, where people get rat tails in the back. Um, what, what's some funny names? I'm going to say... Um, Faded Stevie Wonder. Um, I wonder where the rest of it is. Uh, half man, half faded. Uh, oh, I like that. That would hit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Joe. Oh. oh. <laughs> half man, half faded. That would. Oh, that that's going. Uh, that that's going on the repo stuff. That's some good work, E. Um, um, <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, I was just in it right there because I can't top that one right now. Um, but uh, uh, somebody hit me up with like, what was my thoughts about it? And the thing is, it's not bad, but it's one of them it might be bad for you, depending on your, your life situation, where you work, what type of uh, uh, level you are monetarily. Because if, if you got money, who cares? You can make fun of it. I don't care. You got money. But if you um, but if you want a lesser and if you want to come up, you know, trying to get your financial together, trying to get the, uh, get the money right, uh, it could be like, well, He's struggling, but he's trying something new. He's stepping out the box. He's he's 
extrapolating the conditions that he's in as far as reality. And the reality is you got um, a half fade in, in, in the, the full moon half fade in the back. Um, and it's clean, though. That's the crazy part. It's so clean. It's, it's nice. It's neat. Um, and then it's, it's confusing. Like, it, it's kind of like, <laughs> I mean, some men do that's got the cul-de-sac right now, you know, got the sharp shape up. And then as soon as they, they take off that hat, like, whoa, whoa, fool me, buddy. You got me. Yeah. But I, I like it. Um, another one, my boy sent me a uh, shout out to the boy. He sent me this one right here. So, <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> the fact that he had the nerve to elevate it with the, the water spray spritzer for the automatic spritzer and then to a, a, a water hose or pressurized <laughs> is hilarious. That joint is hilarious. Oh, my goodness. Now I have, depending on the person, my my people, whether it be a, a female or, or male, um, yeah, I've done this one. I've done this one. Um, not to this extent where they're fully drenched, but until you get the back, like, hey, what, what's good, bro? What's up? You good? So, um, this one never gets old. It's always hilarious, and the reaction though. Cause I always wondering like, why do people tolerate that much or let it be that excessive? Uh, Cause after, yeah, especially, yeah, after you start getting drenched in your hair or your neck or your, your neckline starts to get saturated. But I say 10, 10, max 10. Oh, one, two, here you go. <laughs> maybe eight, two in the back and then, and maybe a couple, yeah, maybe 10, can you get the next, mm. eight, I'm going to go back to eight. Mm. Now, I'm going I'm to ask y'all this, like, uh, now, I'll I put this condition on it. Depending on their skill set, and, and this is, ah, uh, ah, uh, I say, all right, yeah, yeah, um, I guess so. <sighs> being ambivalent right now come on now dog come on man but what, what do you think the excessive point or the excessive limit as far as the price of a haircut nowadays i just want to get that opinion just out there in the atmosphere and really being in being an insider i because there's so so many fluctuations of price, whether it be regionally, yeah, location of the the, the shop, um, whether you work in a secular suite or in a group setting, what well, if it's city hood, some upper echelon neighborhood, whatever I don't know. So it's like, what is what would be a good idea to have a consensus price or an average price? And I thought about this before, like barbers collabing to have a unification of a set price. That way you don't go to one shop and it's like, oh, they charge this. I don't care. I don't care what they charge. We're a different entity in the same business, just like restaurants charge a different price for the same food. So we charge a different price for the same haircut. And it's variation in quality. Yeah, just, I'm trying to think of what, what's a nice, quite comfortable price that's inclusive with the uh, circumstances of inflation. What, willing, what price people are willing to pay 
um, the, pri- the, the location, what type of neighborhood you're in, whether you're in a shop setting, singular setting, um, the ambiance, especially because this place is, especially when we first moved in, got pool tables, big TVs everywhere, um, basketball hoop, me. <laughs> Duh. So, of course, the price is going to be a little bit up. And everybody's a quality barber, too. So, that part. Um, but let's go to... I don't know if y'all seen it, um, or ba- basketball fans. Uh, the breakdown of the GOAT of this generation explaining the nuances of basketball with J.J. Redick. It's boring, but interesting at the same time. Uh, <laughs> Because I get it, um, especially like LeBron's journey of having to face arguably the best team ever assembled with the Warriors and having to battle that and beating that. So, But it was interesting, like this point he had to say right here. It's like the breakdown of it. Um, like I said, this podcast is really it's boring for real. Um, but just learning how that LeBron, well, all right, so we know Phil Jackson. Well, I'm not saying we know, but for the main part, a guy named Tex Winter and Phil Jackson revolutionized the triangle offense in basketball, um, basically it's a pass into the post, and you have a screen. You have, yeah, you either have, Somebody coming off a screen and you give it basically to your best player. So just forgetting the nuances because that stuff is boring. Um, Basically saying how LeBron dissected it and analyzed all the aspects of it. It drew me in and I don't know why I was so fascinated, but it was. Um, I guess because it was the dynamic of him going against um, the most, arguably the most influential basketball player ever, and and Steph and that Warriors team. So if y'all don't check it out, if you care, I don't know. Um, guilty pleasure. I don't know if y'all seen it. I've been going down a wormhole of, of pop that pop the bubble for love or pop the balloon for love. Yo, when I tell you, <laughs> one dude. My man had a, a dread. My man had, was overanalyzing women like women overanalyze men, or you hear what you hear, and that's automatically it. Don't even sometimes take in the full aspect of the situation. I don't know. I don't know which one, which one is where it's exception. It's exceptions to the rules because women will accommodate. Some men, depending on, <sighs> no, 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 I don't know. But anyway, the, the show is so shallow. Um, it shows well. It shows the superficiality of people, and it is hilarious. So my man was rating this one baddie, first get, girl out the gate, pretty brown skin chick, pop the balloon because when they. Of course, uh, the host, she um, she starts instigating people's answers, seeing what they think of what was trying to get the real reason why you popped the balloon uh, for the other person rather than, well, you know, I just wasn't attracted to them or I didn't like their vibe. What, what, what didn't you like about their vibe? Um, I don't know. They just, they seem like they, seem like they stink. They seem like they use the wrong toothpaste. So they seem like um, they're a dog lover and not a cat lover. And I'm a cat lover and I don't like dogs that much or the vice versa. Some, something dumb or basically I'm trying to say um, well the person is just ugly or fat or not that cute. Um, they got a lot of work to do uh, facially or stuff. Something like that. That's what she's she's like looking for. It seems like she's looking for anyway. She keeps on picking and prying instead of 
taking an initial. But, well, what, what makes you, you know, I'm, I'm just not attracted to him. What makes you? Is it the hair? Is it the nose? Yeah, it's the nose, you know. Um, it's um, it's like flat like a shovel, something like that. So my man turned down one girl because he, I don't know, like, man, you're beautiful. You are gorgeous. I mean, hair done, feet done. I love toes. He's like, except for that right knee right there is ashy. How the rest of your body is going to be moisturized, but your right knee is ashy. And why did you end up popping your balloon? I don't know. It's the knee, the right knee. You got something going on. I don't know what it is. I got eczema. <laughs> and I use coconut oh. oil. Yeah, zoom in on that. Um, Please. And I just don't know why it's like that. I was like, she not going to take my coconut oil <laughs> regimen seriously. Okay. Everything else looked moisturized, you know, but I seen that Ooh. and that was, that was kind of a red flag. Okay. Ooh. That's it. That's it. That's the only thing. Just the knee. Just okay. the knee. Right one. Dang. <laughs> you just did me. <laughs> Everything else is good. You're beautiful. Ooh. But that right there, to me, I got to be moisturized. I feel you. Yeah. I actually fail. <laughs> You fail? I fail. And I was thinking of something like that. I was thinking of something like that. When I tell you I bust out laughing, I usually don't watch that stuff, but that's that's my reality show. That's my guilty pleasure, and I'm down the rabbit hole on this show. For your entertainment, go check it out. Just just highlight a, a reel or something, especially my man with the braids. I forget what episode it is, but it's it, pretty recent, and it no, no, I don't know. Yeah. Let's look for a dude. Uh, I can't even. Let me see what episode it is real quick. I don't want to. <laughs> I'm terrible. Oh, man. Well, I just say go to Arlette Amuli's channel. Uh, I can't find it right now. But, yeah. Pop the balloon or find love. Hilarious. Um, all right, so back to basketball. Um, the playoffs, it is wonderful. Um, I'm going to just say out of the East, I'm going to go with, I don't trust Milwaukee's done uh, their team chemistry or Doc Rivers. So it looks like Boston's got a, Pretty clear channel, yeah. Pretty clear path to the to the finals in the end, um, unless you know playoff Jimmy and the Heat come to life, or somehow uh, maybe New York. I don't know. The Knicks is a sleeper. I ain't gonna give them a lot of accolades, but hey, they rolling. They they, they, they way better than I thought they were going to be. And Jalen Brunson. I owe you an apology because you following your breakout year, you're following it with more consistency. So, yeah, you're doing your thing, bro. Um, yeah. Out of the West, my sons, we made it. We can beat the Timberwolves. I got us beating the Timberwolves. That's all I'm going to say. And Steph and them, Got the Kings. Yeah, I got Steph in them. And of course, I got, uh, I forgot the, who the Lakers play, but <sighs> unfortunately, once again, AD's out and LeBron has to put on the Superman cape because D'Angelo Russell's only going to be good for about one good game. Yeah. Yeah, they might get bounced. I, I forget who they play, but yeah, they might. Uh, well, I'm gonna go with my man Bron. I'm a second round. He's go. But make it to the first round, whatever. So um uh let me see. Do I have anything? Since it's me. You know I gotta end on a good story time. All right. So here we go. <laughs> What happened at work today? This is the time when my boy shoveled out his ex when it snowed.
so cleaned off the car and all that sidewalk. And her side dude was in the house drinking hot chocolate. Yeah. Didn't even offer my man nothing to drink, probably. People be trash. All right, this is, all right, so, of course, Chavez uh, is, at this time, Chavez is dating probably one of the baddest women he ever had in his life. Um, Veronica, you ever heard of Veronica, or, 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 no, no, no. Let's go with Melanie. I like that name. So, Chavez is dating a baddie, Melanie, and whenever they go out or in a close friend um, group setting, social group setting, Melanie gets all the eyes, all the looks, all the attention. And sometimes, now Charles not a, I mean, Chavez is not a bad looking dude, but it's like, Oh, I wonder what he's got to pull her. It's one of them situations. How did he pull her? Because she is stunning. So I forgot how long Chavez said he was living or they were dealing. Actually, you know what? They were dealing with, dealing with each other and living with each other for a period of time. And Chavez got uncomfortable because one time she was running low on funds. So he was like, all right. I'm going to see what I can do, maybe pull some extra hours at work or whatever. I'm going to help you out with whatever bills or whatever, whatever you're need, asking me of right now, whatever you need, I'm going to help you out. That's no problem. Just give me some time. So Chavez is working, trying to put some funds together for Melanie. And when he finally does it and gives her the money, she's like, oh, no, don't worry about it. I made a call. Somebody help me out. Man, I'm, I'm gone, man. <laughs> yeah. what, what do you mean somebody help you out? Like, the amount of money that Melanie was asking for wasn't just, you know, a couple hundred. Talk about a couple stacks here. Um, and somebody gave this to her willingly and efficiently. Um, so now job is like, am I the only dude you messing with? You got the, the sugar daddy, the side dudes on the low this whole time or something? Like, what's going on? Nah, they not, I'm not dealing with them, but you know, just a friend. They like me. So she uh, used her feminine wiles and got the money. Of course. Fellas, we all know, it's a, oh, that's just a friend. He's like a little brother to me. Um, or don't worry about him. It's about you. Um, do you get any of those excuses? Yeah. Yeah, you, you know what time it is. I'm just saying. We know what time it is. Can we please stop talking to this dude in general? Can you just cut this dude off? I can't just cut him off. Why can't you just cut him off? Because he's like a brother to me. What do you mean he's like a brother to you? He's like a brother to me. I love him. He's like any other person in my family. Like No, no, no. I met your sibling. I met your family. He ain't in He wasn't in that picture. He wasn't in that. That ain't your brother. Well, that's another reason why I can't cut him off. He doesn't have anybody out here. So why do you gotta be the person that he has? It actually benefits you for me to have a friend like him. When you're not available, he's there for me. I can talk to him, we have fun together, he gives me advice. Not that kind of advice anymore, because you told me no more of that advice, no more advice, just regular advice. Sometimes we get froyo. Y'all do what? Um, Chavez at this point say like, yeah, um, I love being with you, but I can't be with you no more. We're going to have to still be together, still rock out, but rock out separately. It's a dichotomy now. It's, it's no longer a, uh, 
it's no longer a, a together storyline. Um, you live your best life, I live my best life. <sighs> Chavez gets his own place in this winter time. And it snowed. It had a heavy snow. And Chavez cares, still cares for Melanie. So he's like, man, I know she by herself. Man, snow kind of thick. She probably got to get to work and stuff. I'm going to be a good bro. I'm going to go over there and shovel the snow off. Knock the car off. Shovel the sidewalk. Make sure she's good to go. And you know, bring her some food or something. So Chavez gets up early. By herself. No help. <clears throat> Starts shoveling the snow. Cleans the car off and everything. And uh, he's wondering... While he's doing this, like, why she never even, like, came outside or maybe acknowledged him or anything, called him, I appreciate you, something, some type of, hey, you know what, I, I really love that you're being thoughtful and really care about me, even though we're not together. So his antennas kind of go up, like, what, what's going on? Because while he's doing it, he can still see, like, people behind the curtain and Melanie does have kids. I meant, meant to forgot that aspect or that um, detail. <clears throat> Excuse me. That detail in the story. Melanie does have kids. I mean, hey, like I said, she she's a bad and somebody did bad things to her. So he sees the curtain moving, but it's not Melanie. So he's thinking this kid, and it's not the kids. Who is it? After my man Chavez finishes doing all that work, about to drop the food off, Gregory opens the door. Man, I appreciate you, bro. Good boy, you did your thing out there. Hold up, got the hot chocolate, you know. With the two hands, you know, got the, the, the mug with the two hands. So, boy, you did your thing. You cold? You want to come in? Want to warm up a little bit? Talk about Chavez, whole count, whole face shattered, broken. This girl let him shovel the snow and had a whole dude over there the whole time. I was like, bro, what, what did you do? He was like, Yo, I was so mad, I laughed. That's all I could do is back up, laugh, and smile. <laughs> <laughs> Teach your man how to squabble. Get that trigger next time, nigga. And dude was cool. You know, because <laughs> of course I didn't give them the food, but he did offer me. No, no, I think I, think I asked him to even, just since he was peeking out the window at you. To make sure you was on your job shoveling to eat, at least offer some, you know, hot chocolate or a coffee or something. You know, keep you warm. He's like, nah, but he did like afterwards. He was real accommodating and stuff. I was like, hilarious. The side dude was in there the whole time watching you shovel off snow. Y'all women, uh, whew. I don't know. I, I could not explain how long I laughed in my man's face when he told me this. <laughs> that is the most electric thing. I couldn't even imagine doing that. Now the kindness of my heart, man. The kindness of my heart just gets trampled over by the thought of Gregory watching me be kind. It was probably Gregory's car. He probably shoveled that out too. I don't know. I'm just adding salt to the wound now. Um, at least the kids could have said something too. That's the thing too. That's why kids are trash. Some, some of them. Some, some kids are trash like that. It probably really ain't even like it. All right, so uh, that is, that's it. Um, thanks for rocking with your boy. Uh, if it was a rough one, I know. And um, yeah, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, follow me on all, all platforms most platforms uh, and uh, stay tuned for me more uh, travel expos the boys gonna be in New York and Virginia 
and uh, maybe some West Coast trips and back down to A, of course. So, uh, <laughs> E-Man the Barber, Goat in the Making, Savon Extraordinary, your barber's favorite barber, your favorite podcast host, hopefully. And um, yeah, we out. <laughs>